Thanks for joining me for another before and after. I'll walk you through the steps that um, I took to get here, the final image of Melinda. Um, I had taken this photograph um, about a year or two ago uh, when she and I first met. And I've edited it before, uh, but I've never changed the background. And this is new to me, thanks to a, a, a tutorial that Sean Archer has released and uh, it includes several backgrounds. It's uh, certainly highly recommended. Anyway, here's the finished product, and here is the before. Um, it's quite a difference, and uh, let me walk you through the steps. So this is the raw file. As you can see, um, I'm a little close to the, to the elbow. It bothers me. It's just a balance issue, particularly since we have so much extra room over here. I could certainly crop and just get the face and maybe the elbow, you know, crop it right here and just get the hand. Uh, be tighter overall, but I do like the curvature in her back. It, um, it, it just imparts a, a confidence, and so I didn't want to crop this uh, very much. Um, but it's easy to add this background or extend the background in Photoshop. Um, also, you'll notice the white paper background that I used seemed to fall, I guess, uh, during the session. So that's easy to repair it as well. So that's what this looks like. Boom. Uh, next up, we go to Makeup. And um, she's got wonderful skin, hardly a blemish at all. Um, but there are some tonal changes that occur through here. It just happens to everyone. And if you want to produce a, a, a cover photo image, we have to address that. And I use a, a process called frequency separation. So here's the before, and here is the after. Um, not too aggressive. Um, it's certainly much more subtle than some of these quick facial filters that you can find on your phone that would remove all sorts of pores and everything and just make you just look like a, a robot. And I certainly don't like those. So it's worth the time to learn about frequency separation and um, include that in your workflow. Next up is um, highlights. I wanted to punch the highlights a little bit, uh, or dodge, I guess, would be the technical term. So uh, we agreed to shoot this black leather jacket because I knew it would be shiny, creating a, a, the, these white, contrasty, um, beautiful tones. Also, the, the zippers are fantastic, too. But while here, I thought I'd also accentuate some of the shiny in her beautiful hair. Uh, particularly where we see some white. It's just generally black and gray here, but we can add a little brightness to those areas just to give it some dimension. I think I'll probably also hit the lips and maybe the nose and uh, brighten that as well. So here's what happens when I do that. Boom. So I'm using a, um, um, a, a simple levels adjustment, um, pretty technical. I suppose if you've never seen it before and if you want some more detail on how that is done, um, just message me and I'll send you in the right direction. Next up, we have flyaways. <clears throat> Excuse me, cracking my voice here. Um, you know, I hope you, I'm not sure you can see this on um, this video, but I see lots of flyaways over here and that just bothers me. So while I'm at it, we remove those. Uh, next up, we have a focus blur. Now I shoot most of my portraits on f8 because I want a maximum depth of field. Um, I know it is commonplace now to shoot at 2.8 or something even wider if you have it just to get that real narrow depth of field, but I find that you, it's very easy to miss focus and an out of focus shot is just a throwaway and you can't use it. So I shoot with f8 for a wider depth of field. My keeper ratio is higher, and then later I can impart some soft focus in areas other than, of course, the eyes and, and the mouth. So that's what I do at this process right here. Boom. Um, it's hard to tell, I'm sure. Um, it's a very subtle, but take a look at her elbow and her, and her skirt, uh, maybe her elbow over here. Um, I know, but you probably can't see. I also defocused around the edge of the hair because that, that flyaway, when you start doing that, it can look a little choppy. So this is the focus blur. You can really tell here by the zipper. So there you are. And next up is one of the reasons why I produced this 
before and after is just to show off the, what, what you can do with the back, background. And uh, the white is great. I like it. It's clean. It's a little dated though. Um, it's a little too 80s, 90s, if you will. A um, little too clean. So we can change that. And with a click of a button, boom. There you go. Now it looks like she's on a um, concrete wall and I think it looks terrific. There's a lot of steps to this backdrop. Um, as you can see, lots and lots of them, about an hour or two worth of work. Um, but uh, here's the before and after. I think it's, uh, it's well worth it and I hope you agree. So um, hopefully you enjoyed the quick tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know. Take care guys.